5784 in the feast of trumpets ushers in the new hebrew new year but this date here is also i know we're going to have some events mid-september i don't want to put no dates now what i see in october i see a lot of storms storms galore that's what i see happening on the horizon also i see flooding you name it everything uh opening up in the month of september and october i know it's a hurricane season but it's gonna be ramped up like never before but this is jerusalem i'm looking at from jerusalem okay. on the 14th okay remember Jerusalem is about I think about eight hours ahead so this is when the eclipse occurs right here by the arm a spike right near Spica you got Mercury and you got Mars and here's the comet the new one 23 p1 located by hydra snake and then we got venus by regulus it's a lot of history of spica on the 15th at midnight 0030 tc hours basically the 14th for our this is where this hurts here's spica right here brightest star in the constellation virgo there's a lot of history on spica i know it's referred to as the wheat holding the wheat before that this was a history of spica now if you look over here nasa did a study on this what was the star of bethlehem and in this it has a lot of information of spica what it was called before the greeks changed the uh, into a, a wheat holding a wheat during ancient time when the library of alexandria was around goes into a lot of details ancient details the best of all the virgin mother and the divine child in his cradle was not confined to this it was celebrated at alexandria and the mysteries so it talks about it talks about uh, the time of the god back talks about reef rebirth connected with solar rebirth there's a whole bunch of other information now this is the information that the magis had knowledge of before the library was burnt there's info it's a lot of read here and for those interested could read and read it he's together in other words Pica was regarded back then a divine star the virgin the light so this is the prophecies or writings that the magis had knowledge of in detail and other stuff it, it, it's hundreds of pages of information thought i laid that out there for those interested examining spica history i mean it, it just gets confusing as each culture rewrites it reinterpretates it i go straight to marcus millennius who i cover before i consider marcus manilius lived in the first century which i consider a magi because he had the knowledge this is the first century this is the time the time of jesus earth talking over 2000 years ago his book is very difficult to read because it's in poems it's like a coded coded and you had scholars for centuries trying to decipher it make sense of it remember those times the book that he wrote right here right there was for the emperor at the time i think it was augustus in the time of jesus in it he has clues the one that draws me here justice over a bygone age so that means a bygone age puts it in the, the book of enoch here sacred codes one who will tend with reverence the hollow temples of the god in other words abandoned temples of the gods so that's where i'm gonna take this because the rest yes is very interesting yes is very enlightful but let's go back the temples of the gods of a bygone age let's go back in time and examine 1798, this 1798 that napoleon's troops stumbled upon a temple buried in sand the men stopping for a rest admired the ornate top of a once great bygone temple. era but a curious artist by the name of dominique vivant denon his curiosity led to one of the greatest discoveries. What he and the troops had stumbled upon was the Temple of Hathor at Dendera. Hide within its walls the brains behind the workings in the universe and the timeline of humanity. Bygone era, Apollo Temple in Egypt. I have no idea when this temple was built. They're saying 8,000 BC or sooner. Clues, sacred text from the prior civilization is there and it t and it mentions 12 the number 12 which jesus had 12 disciples number 12 means a lot and also musical notes as i recall because of that sound that i recorded that video i did about the, the galactic center's calling head was a musical musical notes musical tone 
frequency. It was beautiful. Let's see what else I could find here. One of the most mystery samples of Egypt is Dendera because everything that you can see in that temple is like an open book to understand how Egyptians inherit the information from the Atlantean. Twelve columns. Twelve columns. Hathur looking into the four directions of time and space. So we have twelve columns. There's another that twelve again. The cosmos. This twelve represents the twelve directions which a sphere observe the reality. The icosahedron is a structure that has twelve nodes that points into the sky. Twelve is the most important code that we could have to to understand the different perspective of sphere. By this, we also can find many of the codes of the universe. The faces of the planet are facing toward 12 constellations. 12 constellations, 12 constellations. are the ones that are of music. Music, there These it is. These 12 vibrations are also a projection of geometry. If we count the position 12, we will find the 144. The so number this again. means that you reach the 144 vibration in code of the truth, you will find all the perspectives of the universe in just the 12 colors. If I can make sense of 1%, and that's a lot, asking a lot, or maybe 0 0.001. Going by Marcus Millenius, the hollow temple and the sacred codes. Remember, his now their knowledge was obtained the Library of Alexandria. And maybe that temple right there. How they knew the Star of Bethlehem. Remember, NASA talks about this is how I this road led to this because of the NASA research of the Star of Bethlehem. Took it took me right this temple and with Marcus Millenius also equation into the mix what's happening here it talks about fallen sinful ways and that disrupts the music, the note the harmony and once the harmony is disrupted and sinful ways takes over there's a reaction counter reaction like the yin and yang balance and we're out of balance big time and all the prophecies written down speak of this time period that we're in right now information from to and fro i mean i could go on and on and on now, other texts too ancient basically points when the level negativity basically takes over affects every single natural element starting with the water the magnetic field the planet the planet reacts and it is reacting and the spirit spiritual realms also are reacting opening up doors hidden mysteries to see i mean there's no way you could uh absorb this you go insane now if you could just pluck one information from this it'll make sense if you look at it from the big picture for me all this makes sense from the big picture but trying to relay this as simple as i can it's a challenge by doing so maybe i'll be able to help with a lot of the research because this is bigger than than we know it's happening in september but what's happening in october is judgment the wrath of the creator god jesus warned us about this he warned us about this and it's happening when your spirit leaves the body you will be judged your actions here your thought everything be replayed and then you'll be judged from there you will have eternal life or eternal damnation simple as that it's all there